Hi, and welcome to this lecture in which we will look at the role of personality in business and managerial settings. My main aim today will be to suggest to you how to look at personality, and I will use the Big Five personality model and its dimensions to kind of illustrate personality and key factors of, pers of personality. So, um, personality and the Big Five model. You can think of personality as the way in which you interpret and react to interactions and events in your day-to-day -day life. These interactions are, or the way you perceive these interactions is classified in five ways as the name suggests of the model. So openness, that's the first factor of, of the model, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. I will now explain the individual components or properties of, of, of these factors. So, agreeableness is your tendency to care about others. So, people who are highly agreeable, highly agreeable are very warm, empathetic, and are interested in the problems of other people. So usually an agreeable person at the workplace is the one that you trust with sharing some problems from your life and because you know he will listen to you and maybe even offer some advice. On the other hand, people who are on the opposite side of the spectrum, who are less agreeable, are more individualistic and they prioritize their needs on, uh, as opposed to the needs, needs of others. This makes them slightly better negotiators and uh, people to bring along to important business meetings or dealings with your direct competitors that can affect the future of your business because they won't care as much about the feelings of others. Uh, their main kind of objective is to negotiate on you could, you could maybe say on the selfish side uh, of themselves, but they essentially won't you know, give much attention or much space to, um, to, the, op to the opposing party. So that is agreeableness. The second trait is conscientiousness. Conscientiousness is, uh, determines how much you are able to kind of work hard and be organized. So usually people who are highly conscientious are very sensitive to mess and chaos. So they want to keep everything tidy and organized because they are more affected by messiness than people who are less conscientious. They are also able to work hard and they don't find it as difficult to sit down and focus and do their work. And for this reason, um, People who are conscientious are the driving force of any business because they, because they produce results, they meet deadlines, and they are the essential people who kind of um, keep the business on its tracks. Along with conscientiousness, there is the trait openness, openness to experience, which on the other hand is how much you are interested in new things and how creative you are. So people who are highly open enjoy intellectual stimulation, they enjoy you know, philosophical debates, um, literature, and are able to kind of think of new solutions and processes for the business. And the interplay between conscientious people and open people is integral to any business because, as I said, open people can create new solutions and new ways to overcome problems, which is key to developing new strategies for a business and setting the business on a new path on which the conscientious, the conscientious people then drive the business. Because without, without open people, the conscientious people will just head the business forward. And if the business is headed in a bad direction, then that of course is a problem. Extroversion is the determinant of how much you experience positive emotions. So you can think of this as many events and many interactions with others and stuff happening. And extroverted people usually extract more positive emotion from the world, which makes them enjoy you know, social situations and taking charge in, in interactions with, you know, with other people. They are really keen on social status because it brings them joy. But on the other hand, introvert, introverted people don't extract as much positivity from events like this, which makes them more reserved and more 
sort of shy. So we can spot an extroverted person at the center of the attention, you know, at a gathering, or at a corporate gathering, while the more introverted people will just keep to themselves and won't reveal much because they don't experience as much positivity from sharing personal information, for example. Uh, in hand with extroversion goes neuroticism, because as I said, extroversion is your tendency to extract positive emotion from the world. And neuroticism, on the other hand, is how much how, or how likely you are to extract negative emotion or how, much, how, much, how likely you are to be impacted by negative emotion or negative situations um, in your life. And... Um, it is also determinant how stable you are. So people who are less neurotic can stay calm and stable and don't resort to impulsive kind of responses or uh, withdrawal, withdrawal from situations because they can deal with negative emotions and they can kind of work with it as opposed to people who are more neurotic. I have taken the information and interpretations of the Big Five model from a website called Understand Myself, which has a fantastic uh, personality assessment along the Big Five criteria, which I highly, highly recommend for you to use. It is uh, co-authored by Dr. Jordan Peterson, one of the biggest names in psychology of the recent years. And if you take this test, it will really kind of explain in more depth what I've just outlined and will make your day-to-day -day interactions with others a bit more understandable and easier to navigate. Thank you for your attention.